We have been looking forward to this in studio is Trevor Bauer. And many of you know the story. Um, great pitcher, obviously not in the game right now, trying to get back in the game. Before we start a conversation, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. I want to right. do this real fast here. So you go through the um, last couple of years in 2021, Trevor was accused of sexual assault but never charged. All right, this was during the season. Subsequently placed on administrative leave by Major League Baseball. Right before the 2022 season, he was suspended for 324 games. That was eventually whittled down to 194. The Dodgers placed, uh, pardon me, released Bauer before the 2023 season, went to Japan, did very well. Uh, And then in October, Bauer and his accuser, her name is Lindsey Hill, uh, they dropped the lawsuits against one another. For the record, this is just, this is fact, has not been found criminally or civilly liable in any court Never arrested, never charged, no grand jury ever convened. So, first of all, welcome to the show, Trevor. I want to get that out there. I don't want to assume everybody knew exactly, exactly where where we've been. But after all that, the talent, the money, how were you in this position? How did how do you get here? Yeah, well, I'm, first off, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate the time. Um, it's been a it's been a hard you know two and a half years uh, professionally, of course, but personally. Um, as well. Uh, I guess the first thing I have to say is that you know, I never sexually assaulted anyone. Um, I never have. I never will. It's not who I am as a person. Um, but, you know, I made a lot of mistakes in, uh, in my life in general um, that, that led me to, you know, being in a position where something like this can happen. Um, you know, I've I haven't had the chance to speak on it for two and a half years, so I appreciate you guys having me on to, yeah. to, to have that opportunity. But in those two and a half years, I've had a lot of time to, to think and kind of categorize things for myself into three uh, kind of main categories of mistakes. I'm happy to go over those right now if, if that's mm-hmm. cool yeah. for you guys. Yeah, let's hear uh, I mean, number one is you know, obviously my interactions with, uh, with the women. Um, I agreed to do things that I you know, shouldn't have done. Um, I met people and just like welcomed them into my life with no, uh, no real scrutiny. I'm, I'm very detail oriented when it comes to baseball and training. Everything I do has a purpose, but I didn't apply the same level of scrutiny to my personal life. And, um, you know, I was, I was reckless, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, I ended up, you know, hurting a lot of people around me, you know, my teammates, uh, Dodger organization, friends, family, major league baseball, um, just by not being careful in, in what I was doing in my personal life. So I've made a lot of changes in my life to, to address that. Um, you know, I'm not having uh, casual sexual relationships anymore. I'm keeping my circle very, very tight. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not willing to agree to do those types of um, sexual acts anymore, even if, you know, someone asks me to do those things. Um, so, yeah, I made, a, I made a lot of mistakes in that area um, that I've tried to rectify. Uh, the second category is really my uh, reaction to the media, my, my relationships with the media as a whole. There's obviously been people that um, I've been close with in the media and had good relationships with, but I think in general I've had a contentious relationship with them for a long time. Um, I've always thought you were a jerk, honestly. Yeah, that's fair. I like, and I, I never, I didn't know you, but from afar, right, like watching on social media yeah. and all that stuff, yeah. and you got into it one time with Francesa, I think. It was after yeah. maybe you threw the ball or whatever, and just – it, it was arrogant, maybe thing, jerk type feel is what is what I got. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I think that's uh, that's that's an extremely fair way of viewing things. Um, I look back at a lot of the things that I said and very jerkish. Um, I think you know my perspective on it at the time was, you know, I was bullied a lot as a kid, and my life got significantly better when I started standing up for myself and kind of found my voice to be able to express myself instead of just taking everything. And then I think I kind of just took that too far, and I viewed it at the time as I was standing up for myself. Someone would say something negative about me, I'd fire back. And now uh, my perspective has shifted to I should have just had a, a human conversation with the people. Um, if, I was, if, it, if it bothered me that much what they were saying, I should have just reached out to them and understood their perspective, and I probably would have learned a lot along the way that could have made those relationships better. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm trying to do now, um, you know, reaching out to some of those people privately that I've had bad relationships with and trying to, you know, apologize for, for my part in it, trying to understand their perspective and repair some of those relationships. Um, I think that's important just for me as a human to, to be better. 
Uh, and I guess the third category is really my relationship with Major League Baseball. Um, yeah, I'm a business owner now. Um, I have a lot of employees that I'm responsible for, and I can't imagine what my reaction would be if uh, an employee of mine came out and said some of the things about me that I said about Rob, um, especially without having that conversation privately first. Uh, so I look back on a lot of those things with um, you know, a lot of embarrassment and regret. I It came from a place of wanting to grow the game of baseball, but I think I went about it in the wrong way and uh, probably did more damage than good. So. I, I, the the stuff with baseball, I think that's very easy for people to process. That's that's work. That's baseball. Yeah. The other stuff is where the disconnect and some is hate. Yeah. Some is an understanding of actually what transpired legally somewhere in the middle. I guess my question, Trevor, like I I get it. Like if if I'm a pro athlete and I'm single, you got people slide into DMs. It's it could be fun. It could be fun. But to jump into that kind of behavior, that's what I don't get. Like that doesn't unless I'm wrong doesn't just start when you're, you know, your late 20s and somebody reaches out to you, hey, I like this, I like that, let's let's do it. Like, or, or did it just start that late? Were you always into that aggressive sex? I think that's a misperception on this whole thing is that I'm out there actively seeking that type of thing, and that's not true. Um, I think, I, like I said, I didn't apply a very high level of scrutiny to my personal life, so when someone would ask me to do these things... I was like, okay, let me understand why. Let me understand why you enjoy that, why you want that. I would confirm multiple times, text, in person, during and after, um, you know, the interaction itself. Uh, why do you like this or, you know, that type of thing. I, and I thought at the time that I was, you know, applying a good level of, of um, I had a good understanding of, of why they wanted to do it. And I didn't really, uh, I'm very, like, not judgmental. And so if someone says they like this or like that, I don't really... It doesn't. I don't really judge them for it. Um, and and looking back on it, I absolutely should have uh, drawn a hard line on what I was personally willing to do instead of just going along with kind of what other people were were interested. Sometimes that's not to say that I only ever went along with what you know other people are interested in. But um, when it comes to those specific acts, that type of rough sex acts, that's kind of how I how I approach things at the time. Not how I approach things anymore, of course. I'm not, you know, not did you, willing Did to. you do counseling? Did you undergo any sort of counseling for that? Uh, not in, like, an official capacity, but I've talked to a lot of people. Um, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of discussion over the last two and a half years just going through all of the, the legal process, talking to uh, – we've had a lot of, like, experts that have come in. Um, I just had a lot of people in general uh, around the subject, and I've had to talk about it a lot more than I would – normally prefer to so um not n not in an official like in an official capacity doing any counseling but i've i've talked about it a lot yeah. the, the biggest problem brandon <clears throat> tierney salicata on the fan we have trevor bauer in studio here the biggest problem trevor is the violent physical nature of what took place with you and in multiple women this is not just one thing it's a repeated pattern so now you're saying it's not something that you do any longer but that's something that is the big issue here because of the violent physical nature of it, and it's been repeated. There have been multiple reports out there about uh, different well, uh, accusations. <clears throat> okay, like I, I'd like to clear some of that up. Um, Lindsey Hill alleged that a lot of things happened that, that didn't happen. Um, the, the things that she alleged were very serious and should have been, in, should have been and were investigated extremely thoroughly. Um, they just, they didn't happen. So on that one specifically, like, I understand the, that people look at it and say, these are, these are things that, you know, no one should ever do regardless if it was consensual or not. It should just not, but, but those things that they're saying happened, they didn't happen. Well, that's, but that's one instance, right? right? So, so there are other ones like this is, are you denying the fact that this was a, a, and again, I don't like care what you do in the bedroom, but these, this is the issue that you have here. Correct. This is the bad image that people are going to see. Oh my God, Trevor Bauer, the rough sex, the, the choking, whatever it may be. You don't need to get into details here, but I'm just going based off of the reports that are out yep. there. So if, even if you take this one Lindsay Hill, whatever out, it has happened before. It's been a pattern. No. Um, well, I've had, I've certainly had rough sex before with other people um 
there's there's one other outstanding legal matter, a civil case that someone filed against me. I can't talk about that one okay. specifically because it's ongoing legal matters. Um, the other two, there's two anonymous reports in a newspaper. Um, both of those people first, before they made any sort of allegations against me, hired a lawyer and demanded seven figures from me. When I refused to pay them, they then went and through their lawyers spoke to the to the newspaper. Um, if I if I did those things, why would I? Money wasn't an issue. Like why would I put myself through this? Why why would I refuse to pay them and have all these other allegations come out? Like I I just I'm not willing to get extorted for things that I did not do. And so when reports come out, and I understand the perspective for sure that there's a pattern here, but that's people assuming that these things that are reported, these things that are alleged actually happened. And they just, they, it's just not an accurate account of what happened. So, um, I understand the perspective. Well, I, that's going to be the number one thing that you have to overcome. That's all that matters. And, and I completely the, agree. Well, and, and, and not to <laughs> us or not to even public opinion because we get calls and we'll get into the sports aspect of it in a second, but, oh, the Mets should sign Bauer, the Yankees should sign Bauer. So sports fans may be going to be a little more forgiving, but Major League Baseball, I mean, that's the problem that you have. You, you, a team's got to take a chance on employing you right. based off of these things that are out there, and you have to clear the air and explain and, what the hell happened. And, and look, the best I can the best I can do is say – at the time, I had a certain perspective on it, and I was willing to engage in that type of thing. In every case, I would talk about it with the person. We'd be in an agreement on what was going to take place. I'm not willing to engage in that any longer, um, regardless of any conversation that happens. Um, I, you know, I've had a, a large perspective shift on that. I, my actions were reckless. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I, I've changed. So I, I, I completely understand the perspective, and it's valid. And... I can't do anything to change that other than say, this is how I think was thinking about it then, and this is how I think about it and act now. You see, Trevor, there's a couple of different levels here. There's MLB, there's the teams, then there's the fans, right? Right. So I'm married, I've got a daughter. Sal's married, he's got a daughter. And a lot of our audience has, you know, aunts, moms, women, women that they care about and love and always try to protect. How do you, how, if, if you're, I'm going to, I don't want you to be Trevor Bauer right now. I want you to be mm. Joe Williams, right? Who's a Yankees fan. And Trevor Bauer suddenly is on the Yankees or the Mets. What do you say to your daughter? Like where she has access to Google and she sees a little bit. How do you explain that this is now who we're rooting for? Yeah. Um, well, shout out to Joe Williams out there, wherever he may be. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if he could pitch, we'll take yeah, it. Right. <laughs> Both teams need some pitching. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Look, I'm not a father. I don't have a daughter, so I can't put myself 100% in those shoes. Um, that's definitely a valid concern. It's something that uh, is an uncomfortable conversation to have. Um, I would hope that the conversation would be about um, having personal boundaries, the importance of knowing what you're willing to do and not willing to do. Um, I would hope it would include something about uh, chance for a second chance right. where people are able to make mistakes, learn from them, grow, and be better in the future. Um, you know, I would, I would hope that there was some sort of conversation about, you know, learning all of the facts of a matter before jumping to conclusions. Um, but again, I, I don't have a daughter, so um, it's it's hard for me to really put myself in those shoes. But you and, know that that's coming. And, for and, sure. And being as transparent as you are or you can be here, it's different than being introduced by a team at a press conference and being smashed by, you know, 50,000 questions or getting lit up and walking off the field after two and a third in Queens, in the Bronx, in L.A., whatever, uh, and suddenly, you know, 40,000 people are, are against you, not only because you didn't pitch well, but because of the baggage that you brought. Like, you, this is this is a... This is a massive jump. Um, are, are you prepared? Are you really, really prepared to be able to handle this? I think if I'm 
still standing now after the last two and a half years, after the things that have been said about me, after the allegations that have been made against me, um, I don't think there's anything that's going to <laughs> be more difficult than that uh, on me personally. Uh, so I have no concerns over handling. I mean, I've never had any concerns on handling the baseball stuff, as you mentioned. No. Yep. But I have no concerns about handling the personal stuff either because I've wanted to talk about things for two and a half years. I've wanted to share my perspective and my side on things. I'm not running from questions. I'm not running from those conversations because yep. like I I have a lot of you know responsibility in this and I fully accept that and I, I'm happy to talk about my um, you know, my mistakes and, and how I've grown and learned and stuff from it. So yeah, um, I have no question that I could handle the, the media, the, the fans, the positives, the negatives. Heat. I mean, the heat's yeah. coming. Yeah. We, we know it's coming. And we do want to get into the baseball stuff here. I have a couple more. At least I have yeah, one more. Yeah. Brandon Tierney, yeah. Salicata, Trevor Bauer in studio here. How much of this, Trevor, I mean, you had the longest suspension in the history of the sport for domestic violence, sexual assault, whatever the exact phrasing is there. How much of your penalty do you think had to do with the fact that it, like I said I, I thought you were a jerk maybe the way that you've handled yourself going at the commission all these different things that you've done throughout the course of your career and then on top of it the stuff that came out how much of it do you think was a culmination of the way that you've acted your entire career well, I really I want to stay away from talking about anything to do with the the arbitration and MLB investigation um yeah I'm not I, I'm not able to to talk about that what I will say is you know my actions leading up to this for my career as a whole uh, certainly didn't help the matter. Um, I don't want to in any way downplay the severity of the allegations that were made because they're, as I said earlier, they're very severe and should have been looked into and were looked into very carefully. Um, but, it, you know, my, re my relationship with the media didn't make this any easier on anyone, myself, the Dodgers, my teammates, MLB. My relationship with the league didn't make this any easier on myself or really anyone involved. And I'm directly responsible for those relationships. So, um, you know, in, in, in that sense, my actions, obviously including my actions with the women, as we've discussed, um, made it more difficult. Uh, but outside of that, I can't really comment on that. Look, everybody in life makes mistakes, right? And you, if you if you learn from the mistake, it's a it's a good thing. And this was obviously a mistake or mistakes. What have you learned from it? Uh, I think we don't have enough time probably <laughs> to go through all the things that I learned. But if I could sum it up into you know something simple, I think I was very focused on uh, myself and you know, the technical side of my job. Um, and I was not very focused on the human side of, of things, uh, the human reactions to what I said, the human relationships. And I didn't really consider other people's, uh, you know, how other people would be affected by my actions, um, both good or bad. I it just never really, I didn't consider it. So I think if I had to sum it up, it'd be just, you know, empathy, having more of a human connection with people um, understanding their perspectives and and trying to look out for how I will affect them instead of just how they're affecting me. So we're talking to Trevor Bauer. He's with us in the studio, BT and Sound on the fan. Now, and we'll definitely get a couple of good baseball questions here for you, Mets and Yanks both pertaining to them. But you've done, you're starting the tour now. You're on Fox News yesterday. Now you're with us, two massive outlets and a chance to tell your story. Now, the skeptical person, and, and I would, I would, I would think that this is common sense, but the skeptical person sitting there saying, guy's desperate. You know, $100 million flushed down the chute. He needs the money. He's got to reclaim his career. Yeah, Japan's great, but it's not the States. He's one of the best pitchers in the world. He wants to be on the biggest stage. Why should, and I don't blame you, but those who don't feel as, as if you're authentic right now, and it's not just about saving your ass, why should people believe you? Yeah, I mean, I don't ask people to believe me right now. Um, because I think but you're gonna have to on some level because for a team to take a chance, yeah, you're gonna I, have to convince people like now. I certainly hope that people will believe me. I'm I'm sincere. I'm not one to come out and lie. Um, I don't fake things. I think I've, <laughs> you know, I think I've had uh, unfortunately a long history of, of not faking things and and being very you know open and and out there um, in the public. But uh, look, this isn't. Um, 
this isn't something that I'm doing just to try to, you know, get a job. And then if that doesn't happen, I'm just going to go away or whatever. This is something that I've changed in my life. Um, I want to be seen as a positive influence, not a negative. I want to be a positive role model, not a negative one. I'm committed to that. That's how I'm going to live the rest of my life. Um, so I certainly hope people will believe me. There's only so much I can do in two weeks, four weeks, two months, yep. um, compared to what I can do in two years, five years, 10 years. And I hope that people over the course of time will look back and say, okay, he was, he was sincere. He was genuine because the actions, the follow up, um, aligned with what, what I heard him say. Right. It, it can't just be about talk. You're actually going to have to go out there and, and act in a certain way. And, and look, we've seen Michael Vick do what he did and bounce back, not only in play, and has become a broadcaster now. Yeah. Domingo Herman, who, yeah. who had issues, he was celebrated for throwing a perfect game. So, and I'm not trying to compare, you know, other stories to yours in particular, Trevor, but I mean, all right, did some bad things. People sometimes deserve second chances here. And if other, and he wasn't charged with a crime, I, people need to remember he was not charged with a crime. It's a fact. Like all, I'm, all I'm looking for is a second chance to to have the opportunity to prove to people that I'm doing things differently, that I've grown, that I've learned lessons, that I'm more mature now. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove that over the course of time. I hope that I get to do it in in baseball. I hope that I get to do it on the field and in the clubhouse and in the community, as opposed to just outside of the game yep. but one way or the other like i'm committed to doing that and to being a positive role model moving forward what is your relationship like right now it's bt and sal on the fan we're talking with trevor bauer in studio with current players in in the game i have very good relationships with uh with players in the game i you know i'm sure there's people that don't like me of course um but i have countless texts from players coaches managers um people in all walks of baseball um, that won't say anything publicly as you know, I'm sure you can understand why that they might not do that. Well, just like they got they've got. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah of I course. And you know, I, I do appreciate the people that have come out and said stuff. Mookie Betts, um, one of my favorite guys in baseball, someone I'm close with did come out and, and voice uh, his opinion. I, I really appreciate that, but there's countless other texts that I have um, that I'll never talk about publicly to protect that. The because privacy, that's a, but. I'm sorry, Trevor, to cut you. That's a big part of this too, BT. Like, sure. yes, the organizations are going to have to be willing to take a chance and in an initial PR hit. But if the clubhouse is like, yeah, oh, do, do they want, want this guy, guy back? Yeah, that would be one thing to call us a salad. We want Trevor Bauer. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know how he's going to work in the clubhouse here. It could be a problem. That's why I asked that question. Yeah, I think I have a reputation of being bad in the clubhouse. Um, <laughs> I think that got started very early on in my career back in Arizona. Um, some things, you know, I'm at fault for for sure. Some things completely out of my control, but you know, I haven't, I haven't felt that in years and years and years. There, there hasn't been. I mean, dating back to you know, partway through my time in Cleveland, like I was, I was fine in the clubhouse. I had good relationships. Like we were close as a team. I went to Cincinnati. And we were close as a team. I went to the Dodgers, and we we're close as a team. You know, there's. Uh, there's public perception, which I understand is in, in our society is oftentimes reality, right? Perception is reality. But um, there's also the reality of me being in the clubhouse and knowing those relationships that I have, uh, and the perception doesn't match the reality. Okay, so now we thought he was coming here. We were hoping. Yamamoto gets a gazillion dollars, and I know he's got filthy stuff. He's never thrown a pitch in the United States that mattered, Okay. Uh, you are a pitcher of record, an accomplished one, and obviously dealing with this. I I can't imagine that you're not playing Major League Baseball this year. I can't imagine. And I put myself on the record, Yankees and Mets should already be deeply vetting you and should already be in the process of determining just how serious they are in, in signing you. So the question is, Teams reaching out yet? And if they've reached out, have you even had any contractual dialogue? Where, where are, Let's start with that. Where are we with teams reaching out to you? Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations. Um, you know, of course, I have agents that handle the majority of those of those conversations. I've personally had some of them, um, but my agents have had a lot of a lot of dialogue with a lot of different teams. I don't really want to discuss which teams they are I got or you. anything. I got like you. That, Does it seem serious, or are, are they actually like talking terms, or like just general? Hey, let's get let's plant some seeds and see where this goes here. Yeah, I mean it's free agency, you know, is slower some years and, and faster other years. So I would say 
looking back at the one experience I have in it and the when things uh, happened, this offseason has been almost exactly the same as the last time that I was a free agent in terms of where the contract or where the uh, conversations are right now and when we expect to have any sort of contractual details starting to be discussed. That didn't happen until January, uh, maybe second week of January okay. last time. I was All right, free so it's agent, not that so. far off. Do you, in your heart, though, do you feel like you're going to be on a big league mound next year? You know, I'm not sure. I like, I'm one of the best pitchers in the world. I think talent wise, uh, no one questions that I should be in a big league uh, locker room and on the big league field. Obviously, there's ex- you know, <laughs> there's extenuating circumstances that are of of concern, and um, I, I really, I, I don't know. I I'm very hopeful. Um, I, I just I want a second chance, you know, and um, I'm hopeful that someone will will give that to me. But I realize that there's a lot of reasons why they why they may not and um you know valid reasons not you know um that, that i'm responsible for so uh i'm hopeful and we'll see how it plays out does money it's bt and sal on the fan talk with trevor bauer in studio does money play a major factor here? like i'm not sure what you got in japan but i'm assuming you can make more money maybe there than you might get here which would lead a team to get great value we talk about all the mets and yankees you're a guy who could be a number one or certainly a number two at this point and you're not going to get the $40 million bucks a year that you were getting. Does money have a factor in your decision at all to come back to the big leagues? My, my, only, uh, my only goal is to get a second chance to play. I, I want to go back to play. I've spent 30 years of my life uh, developing a skill set, uh, becoming the best in the world at something. And I just want to go back to work. Um, so, no, I mean, money won't be a... A hindrance. It's not like I'm going to hold out and say, "Well, talent-wise, I'm worth X," and right. ignore all the other stuff. So you're realistic at this point. If contractually, you understand where where we're I, at. I, I'm I, probably more than anyone out there. I understand <laughs> yeah. now exactly I where we're at. Now, <laughs> you did you did choose the Dodgers over the Mets back in 2021. You might have upset yeah. King Cohen there, and you know, it's bothered me a little mm. bit as a Mets fan. I got to be honest. The stuff leaked about the Mets hat, and I'm like, "Huh? I don't know if I want Bauer, but I'd certainly take him." And then you chose the freaking Dodgers, Trevor. But you think about that decision maybe impacting your chances to come back and potentially play for Steve Cohen, who certainly had interest in you. Look, I think that the way that that unfolded was unfortunate. Um, you know, a, a big mistake on on our part having that website page live, and I, I regret that. Um, I, it wasn't an, an intentional attempt to troll anyone or to to piss any fan base off. Um, I think outside of that, you know, free agents get offers, good offers from teams all the time, and turn them down. So I would hope that that doesn't impact future decisions. Uh, the fact that that website page leaked early, um, it might, um, and that's on me. Like my my team made that mistake. So, mm-hmm. uh, by the way, Trevor Bauer is live in studio now. Listen, I went back and I read all this, and I think it was seven or eight tweets in succession. <clears throat> excuse me, that you put out there trying to clarify what happened with the with the website going live and. I choose to believe you. I mean, it's either that or you're the best liar in the world. It seemed fairly authentic to me. And if I'm not mistaken, there were three or four charitable endeavors that you filed Boys and Girls Club yeah. uh, where you donated ten or $15,000 to prove, in New York based, by the way, uh, to prove that that wasn't a ruse and that you weren't trying to play Met fans. So that's the Met angle. Here's the Yankee angle, all right? And we've talked about this a lot. And I, I just need the, I need the bottom line truth now, no nonsense, no dancing. Garrett Cole, all right? We know the relationship that you had in college. It was a little little cold, little different personalities, whatever. Both amazing pitchers, but different directions, not really tight. And it's gotten a, well – it's almost like it's been hijacked because we were talking a little bit yesterday, full disclosure, and, and you told us it's not necessarily that way anymore. What's the story? Is that's the first thing the Yankee fan wants to know. If he would come here and he's going to piss off Garrett Cole, we don't want him. What's yeah. what's going on with your former teammate? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing going on with uh, with Garrett and I. We're fine. Um, we don't talk every day. You know, he has his life, I have mine, and um, our paths really haven't crossed much uh, since college. But we've been at multiple alumni games at UCLA with each other, had pleasant conversations, talked about baseball mechanics recovery stuff like that like there's no issue between me and him and I, he would say the same um i think that's something that stems from college look we're both intense competitors and that's one thing i respect the hell out of him for 
Like he's one of, if not the best pitchers in the game. The run he went on with Houston, uh, I think the last like five months of the of the year when he was there in the playoffs, incredible. One of the best runs in modern baseball he's a history. Famer. Like he's a Hall of Famer. It, it's I have nothing but respect for him, and I'd love to pitch against him. I like testing myself against the best, and what better way to do it than to be in a rotation facing the same teams with the same defense and everything. I, I'd love that opportunity. Let, let me ask you that. I respect that. Let me ask you this. So if the Yankees, who are historically much more conservative than the Mets, as you know, if they go to Cole and they say, all right, you you know what you know what, you know what what he's been through, Trevor, um, we, need, we have some holes and we need some arms, can you vouch for him? Do you think he would at this point? Um, yeah, I think he would. I certainly on the field and uh, in the clubhouse, like personal relationship. You know, I haven't spoken to Garrett. I don't know how he feels about the off-field stuff, so mm-hmm. I don't want to put words in his mouth. I right? got you. Um, but outside of that, yeah, I mean, if you would have asked me this before 2021, I would have said absolutely he'd vouch for me. Brandon Tierney, Salicata. We have Trevor Bauer in studio. Do you think you can handle New York? Like, there's New York, and then there's New York off of what you're going through and trying to come back from. Do you think you can handle this market under these circumstances? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, if I've if the last two and a half years haven't knocked me down, uh, there's not much that's that's going to. The the types of things that have been said about me um, and the volume at which they've been said has been, um, <laughs> it's been a lot. Um, I, I've you know. I don't really go on social media much anymore. I have people that kind of post content for me, but I'm not out there reading tweets and reading articles. I, I wouldn't have been able to survive if I was doing that the last couple of years. And um, I'm a business owner now. I have a lot of other things off the field that I spend my time focusing on. I think it's a lot healthier for me because, you know, my mind is is very active and needs something to be working on. Um, so, you know, I, it's, I'm also committed to like, you know, being better at, talking to people like I mentioned earlier and if someone writes something negative about me or says something negative about me I'm happy to go on and just have a conversation I mean you mentioned earlier that you kind of looked at me as a dick and yeah I think if, I said jerk but I was going to say dick and our boss sure. said not to say it so uh, there you well, go well I you. Yeah. sorry for you did say it yesterday you can yeah. say it now I can say it I thought you were dick yesterday yeah he did uh, maybe I can't say yeah. that on air sorry no, we but, can. Uh, but yeah I think it would have been you know had I just come in before and like hey let's Let's just talk, you know, whether on the air or off the air. Um, I think probably you would have had a, a different opinion, maybe right. not a better opinion of me, but different for sure. And that's something that I'm, you know, committed to doing moving forward. New York, Kansas City, wherever, it doesn't matter. Small market, big market. Um, so, yeah, and to, to put it simply, I can – I have no questions on handling And, and you know, listen, listening to you talk, Trevor, like the, the fan in me is like, man, this guy was made to compete in New York. Like you're a competitor – you had an opportunity. Why did you choose L.A. over New York? Um, close to family. And, you know, I grew up going to Dodger Stadium. Um, I sat in the bleachers with my dad listening to Vin Scully on the radio watching the game. Okay. And Here's your answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, all right. That's an easy hey, one. You know what? That's a great answer, though. It's, yeah. At least it makes sense. Now mm-hmm. I, feel, I don't feel as hurt as a Mets Little fan. little nostalgia there. I've he actually never played the Mets like Yamamoto did. He's no yeah, dummy. You get yeah, a little right. more money out of the Dodgers like, uh, like Yamamoto did. I've uh, that, that, that wasn't me. I have to give, uh, I guess, credit to my, my agents on that if, if credit is due. But um, I've actually never played in, uh, in City Field. That's one of the really? two stadiums I've never played in, yeah. So well, let me ask that? you this well, with Trevor Bauer, of course, comparable deals. And I'm sure on some level there'll be options, incentive laden, whatever. Both the Yankees and the Mets structure the same exact deal. And they, then they offer you what's more appealing right now. The Yankees or the Mets. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to dodge the question a little bit. You can't, you can't bit. dodge that well, a lot of questions in that. If you're dodging that, you'll never make it here. Yeah. You can't dodge that one. You've got to answer I'm gonna, that one. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a caveat. I don't know anything about their, their organizations. I've spoken to the Mets a little bit more than I've spoken to the Yankees just because last free agency. So if I have to answer, I would say the Mets, just because I know a little bit more about their personnel, what their processes are, because I've already been through those conversations, but um, having the chance to go through those conversations with the Yankees, my opinion may change. But if you ask if you ask me today, I have to say that because I know a little bit more about their operations. You still That's think you're answer. you still think you're a top guy? Like if I look at you and say, "Oh, the Mets could pencil and Bauer, the Yankees, whatever you slot in behind." Call like, are you a number one? Number two? Where do you value yourself right now? Because I haven't seen you pitch in the big it's leagues. Been a while. In, in, yeah, 
I'm a I'm a top 15 pitcher in the world. I would say. Where are you at on the gun right now? I know it's not all about velo, but where are you? Well, I don't. I know your numbers were very good in Japan. What'd yes. you hit? What top top velo? Uh, I topped out. I set a new career high in velocity, 99.4. Um, my average velocity was higher than it's been since 2014, and I think it was about even with 2014, 94.4 miles an hour. What do you attribute the uh, the jump to? Uh, well, I never stopped training. So in professional baseball, you get three months of training and nine months of season. Um, I had 18 months straight of training, so I was able to get a lot better, more physically capable, add a new pitch. Um, I have a splitter now. Uh, everyone in Japan throws splitters, so I was able to pick up some some tips over there. Um, talk to Yamamoto about his and a couple other guys. So. You talked to him, Yamamoto, you said? Yeah, yeah. I, I played his team. Um, I didn't match up against him specifically, but we talked for probably 15 minutes before before one of the games. What's he look like from your eyes? He's incredible, man. Um, like just he's, pure filth? Unhittable stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has the arsenal. Like, he uses... So, Japan's a little bit different from a swing path perspective. The hitters have different approaches and different swing paths, so he uses arsenal more four seam splitter and then an occasional big curveball. Mm-hmm. Um he also has a cutter and a sweeper slider that he just I think he threw his sweeper like 0.2% of the time, but it's good. Like it's like an elite sweeper. He spins the ball very well. It's true it's it's high spin, true backspin, fastball. He's also a he's a shorter guy, so his release angle is low, which makes the fastball play a lot better. Um splitter is 90 and has an elite movement profile to it. Like I mean you're talking about like elite stuff. Yeah, now, he sounds okay. God, you're a yeah. student of the game. Yeah, his guy's a cerebral. Oh, now, we, me and Tiki used to interview him a couple times. Yeah. We did. And he was he was always great coming on Talking Ball. It's one thing to know just in general, but you're talking about specifics with certain players. Uh, I just I mean, you got a scouting report on right Shota Imanaga? You have one on Yeah, him? yeah. And? I mean, uh, another elite fastball profile. Um, when he's 94, 95, he's got an excellent command of his fastball. He can basically throw nothing but fastballs all game and chew people up. Um, At mid nineties, not even th- why, just movement, location. I mean, you're, so the average like big league fastball has like sixteen inches of lift. Let's okay. say, yeah, uh, depending on the measurement tool, but let's just say it's about sixteen. Yeah, um, he's hanging out at twenty two. Wow. So the ball is appearing to hitters as if it's going to be two balls lower than where it actually ends up. Yeah. So people yeah. just swing and miss at it nonstop. What, are, they you pop at? what are you at inch-wise? So 16 for him, 20, you know, average 22 for him, I should yeah, say. Yeah. You, you are what? 18. Roughly. 18. Okay. Uh, I would say like range-wise 17 to 20, but probably averaging 18. What's well, somebody like Cole? I don't know. What the hell are you talking about? Garrett, I'm, not what sure, I'm not sure on Just Garrett's. I think he was like more like break. 20. 20 inches. Last I checked when he was in Houston, I don't. I haven't seen New York numbers. Speaking of Japan, I was talking with Trevor Bauer, BT and Sal here on The Fan. Do you have to let them know by a certain date what your intentions are if you're going to go back there, which then would obviously impact the major league uh, conversations that you're having. Yeah, no, the, there's no work. There's no contract in place. I'm a free agent. I okay, signed a okay. one year one year deal in Japan, so we're talking to to Japan. Um, you know, same type of thing, talking to teams here and there. Um, I love Japan. Japan's uh, it was awesome. I, I can't say enough good things about it. The people were awesome. The fans were awesome. Base Stars organization, like, super welcoming, and, like, it was such a great experience. Um, obviously, you know, I would prefer to <laughs> – it was, it was hard for me to be, you know, away from family and friends for that long. Um, I think it's difficult. I have a, a new respect for the Japanese players that come here, for all the foreign players that come here, um, seeing what it's like, experiencing what it's like being away from friends and family, and just the culture that you grew up in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard. Um, I think – you know, people deserve, uh, especially the Japanese guys that come over that don't get to go through the minor leagues, that come over and are expected to compete at the highest level in a new league away from a culture that they're used to. Like, yeah. uh, I think they deserve a little bit more leeway with the fans than they get sometimes. Um, it's it's hard. So yeah, I'd prefer to, to play at home. Um, but that's not to say anything negative about Japan. I love my time there, and I would – most well, faith, they gave play. you a chance. I mean, you yeah. were dead in the water. If it's not for yeah. Japan, I'm not, not, maybe you could have gone to Taiwan. I'm sure, I know there's other, you know, international baseball options, but behind the United States, Japan's number two. They they opened the door is, for you. Is there a player, a pitcher currently that you look up to and respect in the big leagues? Or maybe not look up to and respect, but, you know, look at him and say, that guy is dominant or this guy is dominant. Whoever it could be. Blake Snell won in the Cy Young last year. Whatever. Pick a guy. Yeah, I mean, Garrett um, is definitely one of them. Spencer Strider is another mm. one. Uh, Burns. Great pitcher. Um, I mean, th- there's a lot of guys. Honestly. I look. I I watch guys. But you could be I, as I good. I study. 
Um, I try to pick up things from them, and I try to compete against them. So if it's like, this guy does this thing better, I'm going to go try to do it better than I he does. I love that. Well, I mean, listen, you guys need him. So do we. Oh, Yankees need pitching, too. Don't I'm make saying, like, you guys I, like the I Mets. I love for the Yankees to sign him. I've said that. You, I'm hiding that. You might be the ace of the Mets right now. Hey, look, they got some, you know, Kodai Senga did a nice job coming over from Japan in his first year with the He's Mets. He's great. Yeah. You know, Quintana. They, but they have right now, you know, they went all in on Yamamoto to get a number one. That's why I think the idea of, of signing you would be appealing because – you're getting a guy with number one potential, and yeah. you're going to get and no offense, but you're going to get a, a good value. Like you're not getting the forty million that you were getting. So uh, that's what I've been saying for a while. Um, let me uh, let me throw this at you, Trevor. So BT and Sal on the fan with Trevor Bauer in studio. So it's a one run game. You're up, and nobody on. You know, one out, two out, whatever. Judge is up. How do you pitch, Judge, w- without <laughs> walking him? How 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 would you attack, Judge? Yeah, I mean, I've I've had plenty of those <laughs> interactions with him. Um, I'd have to look at the numbers and what he's doing currently. His swing may have changed, his approach may have changed, but um, based on what I you know what I last remember, it's it's uh, elevated fastballs. It's top down. It's better than side to side. Yeah. Um, so it know, used to be balls. sliders. It used to be sliders. Low. Remember when Scherzer was abusing him yeah. uh, at City when he, those sliders low and away, but he he tightened up. He found that hole. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you have to balance. Timing, so you got to go fastballs up and in occasionally. He can get to it, so you can't live there. Um, it's top down breaking balls, and it's a a sweep, a bigger, slower slider. If um, if you're going to go lateral, if you're going to mm-hmm. go away because you want the speed difference. Um, if you go with a hard slider and you leave it in the zone, it's it's dangerous. So um, those are kind of the options. Um, I have a new split now. I'd have to look at how he how he performs against uh, you know splits, but um, gotcha. Yeah. Are you somebody, Trevor, that would, and again, I know in the short term you want to get back in the game, obviously, and be one of the top pitchers just like you were you know, for years in the major leagues. You ever think down the road being a manager or a pitching coach with all the knowledge that you have and, and being a student of the game? Yeah, I've had a lot of those thoughts. Um, I think you know, one thing I've always wanted to do is kind of run a college program um, and just like a true development program. Um, I don't see myself necessarily doing it in professional ball, just unless the landscape changes a little bit. You don't get enough time to work developmentally with players because in the off season everyone goes home and they're they're spread out and during season you have to worry about competing which like I love competing but I think from a training perspective and a coaching perspective I like development and developing the skills because I think that's where I'm I'm best. Um, so I, I I do it privately already. I, I run a gym. We train athletes. You know we're, we got twenty to twenty five pro guys in there this off season that I'm working with on a daily basis, mechanics, pitch design, approach, mentality, strength, whatever. Um, I enjoy that. Um, so I can see myself doing something like that. I don't know if I'd ever do it in like a, you know, like a big league pitching coach right. type of a type of a role. Now, let me ask you this. I mean, this, I think a lot of the, the parents would enjoy hearing this Trevor Bauer with us here on BT and sound on the fans. So my son's nine today. He's a ball player, club baseball, and I'm not alone in the new, in the, in the metropolitan area, but there's so many games uh, there's so many, so much misinformation. You know, you could be if you don't know the game yourself as a parent, a coach could easily burn your son or daughter out. What's the best approach? I don't mean 13, 14, you know, eight, nine, even still ten from a pitching perspective. How often should you pitch? I know you're not throwing curves, there's no way that's happening at that age, but you mix in the change, try to spot the fastball. Any advice for baseball moms and dads out there? Yeah, and this is really nice because the best advice developmentally also aligns with the best advice or what I think is the best advice parentally. Okay. Um, have fun playing different positions. Um, and, and I'll give a little bit. There's, It's a lot deeper than this, so um, I won't take time to explain it. But, like, if you play different positions, your body has to adapt to a bunch of different movements. You develop the motor skills and you develop a better throwing pattern in general. If you want to pitch, you first have to throw. So if you develop a really robust throwing pattern where you can throw sidearm on the run from shortstop and you can make a crow hop throw from the outfield to throw someone out and you can make a quick double play shovel pass, like you're developing body awareness. And when you get on the mound, it's just a different type of throwing. Mm-hmm. The most important thing at that age is to develop throwing pattern first and then to develop fastball and arm speed and, and velocity um, as opposed to other pitches. With the way that pitches are taught these days, the high-speed cameras, the knowledge that's out there, you can pick up a new pitch in two months, and it can be elite. Some people are picking up pitches in between starts, and they're good big league pitches the next, you know, three days later. Like as a showy pitch or a pitch that they're going to utilize? Something that um, 
they'll utilize like up to 20 percent wow yeah wow, i've seen crazy. i've seen that happen um so you don't need to start early on developing all these pitches what you need to do is learn how to throw hard in an effective way yep. so you're not putting yourself at additional risk and the best way to do that is to go play a bunch of different positions which is also the most fun for kids you big a long toss guy big long toss guy yeah one, um, one, one key on long toss yeah to only go as far as you can hit your partner within one step. So if you have to move one step left, yep, right, yep, front, yep, back, yep. that way you're training command as well, and you're not putting yourself in a position where you're, like, getting out of whack mechanically and, and putting extra strain. That makes sense. One, one more forward. on this. BT and Sal on the fan. We have Trevor Bauer in studio. The health of pitchers is a major freaking problem in the sport. Yeah. Guys think they could try to fix it, limiting innings and pitches and all this stuff. They still get hurt with big injuries. you have any ideas on how to fix that or how to stay healthy? Yeah, the first thing that has to be said on that is, like, as you have to throw harder to get an opportunity, like, there's more stress. So, of course, injuries are going to go up. There's no foolproof way to, to stop them. That being said, um, you can definitely do stuff to limit them. Um, it takes a lot of work and dedication, and I think most guys aren't uh, either one exposed to that type of stuff to know what to do, or don't have the mental ability to to do that. Um, but just like you know, probably shouldn't throw hard the day after you pitch, and a lot of guys have a bad outing and they go throw hard the next day, and so you put yourself in a hole recovery wise. You know, you should eat well during the season. It's hard to eat well on the road. It's hard to eat well at home if your organization isn't providing high-quality food. Most guys don't know what eating well even means. Mm. Um, you know, organizations have uh, nutritionists, and it's getting better, right, but not in the minor leagues. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that can be done to, like, incrementally – chip away at the problem, but it'll never be like 100% guys don't get injured. I got to be honest, BT, yeah. aside from the obvious, like Bauer on the mound and, and what he could do as being a top pitcher, as you say, Trevor, yourself, top 15 pitcher in the world right now, I think you'd be an asset to any organization. Look at the knowledge. That, uh, he's, he, he knows the game. He's and a, I'm not he's trying to get stressed. Like I said, I thought you were a dick from the beginning, whatever, but I... I you, could, you you would be an asset to any major league baseball. I've always known this though. Yeah. Remember, me and Teak had him on a bunch, and yeah. he, he's been talking like not. this for a while. Yeah, tweeting. You know, really, you 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 embraced Twitter like very aggressively back in the day, and, and uh, created an avenue to to connect with fans uh, probably earlier than most. I want to read you something. I want your reaction. So, uh, Trevor Bowers with us here in studio, by the way, BT and Sal. I I put this poll up on Twitter, and that's uh, a couple of hours ago, a couple thousand votes. I said, right now, are you open before the interview? Are you open to Trevor Bauer signing with the Yankees or the Mets? What do you think the percentage of yes was or is so far? Um, I've seen a couple of these things over the last couple of years. I'd guess somewhere 55, 60 percent. 66 percent. And I would think, I would think, knowing our audience, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I would think that that would trend more favorably. That's got to make you feel good. It's got to make you feel good. Yeah. I, I mean, I do a lot to try to engage with the fans um, content wise. And actually, on the Twitter thing, I originally got onto Twitter to try to engage with fans and be positive from a baseball knowledge standpoint. Yep. I wish I just would have stuck there right. <laughs> instead. Avoid the DMs, dude. You yeah, can still go yeah. on. Just don't check out the DMs. Well, not even just that. The other but stuff. Even just too, like yeah. the, the, combat, yeah, the combative yeah, stuff. Right. And, yeah. But. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it makes, me, it makes me feel good for sure. I think a lot of fans out there are able to look at things and make their own decisions. To your guys' point, like, people care about winning. I think they can look and say, oh, this guy would help us win. Um, and it's good to see that they, you know, look at the other stuff and are willing to give a second chance, regardless of how they feel about it, you know, willing to say, hey, give this guy a second chance. So. Why should fans welcome you back? Well, I think, you know, giving a second chance to someone is, is important. I think that's an important life lesson for anyone. Um, you know, I've, I, I can say all I want that I, you know, I've made changes in my life. No one's seen that yet. Um, I, I mean, if you look at my Twitter activity over the last two or three years, there's, there's not been and really over the last like four years, there's not been really any of that combative stuff. Um, so there's signs out there, but look, I, I'm one of the best pitchers in the world. I can help on the field. I can help win. I can help in the clubhouse. I've been doing that for my entire career, every team I've been with. I think, you know, getting a second chance would mean a lot to me. I think it's something that's important in society that we give people second chances. Um, that's something that I have to, you know, I have to ask the fans for, and it's not guaranteed. But the other stuff I can, I can guarantee. I'm going to pitch well. I'm going to help the team win. Trevor, I, I don't have much more for you here. Um, Trevor Bauer with us on the fan. Let, let's, say, let's say it's one of our teams. They signed you, right? I have no doubt 
you know, from our conversation today, yesterday, the press conference, you handle every question, you answer, um, you're transparent, you're, you're contrite, everything that you've shown so far today, right? But does that continue? Because I think the one problem would be, like, if I'm you, I, 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 I can't address it the first day and then say, I'm, I'm done with that, I've already addressed that. Like, and in a loud, busy, big city like this, there's going to be a lot of people coming at you. Not to regurgitate what we talked about earlier, I just want to make sure that you are prepared to not just one and done at, at, at an initial press conference, but to keep talking about it if people want to talk about it. Yeah, look, I'm not running from any of the questions. Um, I'm not running from opportunities to, to talk about it. I think that I have a unique uh, story here. Um, it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of these out there and I think it provides a good learning opportunity, um, for maybe other players that can learn from my mistakes, maybe kids that can learn what to do, what not to do mostly. Um, and I want to be a positive influence. So to the extent that someone wants to talk about things whenever, you know, whether it's now today or it's three years from now, I think, you know, that's something that I'm interested in doing because, I want to be an example that helps someone else do it better than I did it, you know? So There you go. Sounds like somebody to me. And, and look, I was the one that was more difficult in this. Anytime this conversation would come up, you know, BT be like, hey, would you be open? I'm like, ah, I don't know if I would. I, I just don't. And certain teams like the Mets, because they've had certain issues go along there that I don't know if they could take the PR hit <clears> that it would be, you know, bringing you in. And like I said, I, I didn't love the attitude or the arrogance for years just in following from afar. But I do believe in second chances, yep. and which is one of the reasons why we have you in studio on the show today, and we appreciate you coming in, but also we're giving you the platform here. So I do, we believe in, in second chances, and there are plenty of examples before you, Trevor, that have gotten second chances and thrive. We mentioned Michael Vick, and there have been plenty of others. Even Doc and Darrow yeah. with drugs. I mean, think about the Bernard King. Look at Bernard King's early history. Google it. It's not, it's not going to be easy, like I said before, because of the nature of what's gone on here, but... I'm all for second chances, and I, I hope for you. And look, for, for sports fans that root for you or want to root for the team, I know you could help. See, that's one thing. Like, we know you could help a team out and be an asset to an organization on the field, off the field, especially learning from mistakes. Like, I think Mike Vick could be a great asset in helping dogfighting, yeah. all that stuff as he's done afterward. Well, you, if you've learned, truly learned from your mistakes, Trevor, you can be an asset not only to a team and the organization on the field, but also off it and helping other people grow. So, I hope you get a second chance. No, I appreciate that. Um, I hope I do as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> All right. uh, but but yeah, thank you. And um, you you mentioned that you know you guys are giving me a platform, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, no, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, and, and by the way, let's face it, this interview a whole heck of a lot better than what happened on Fox yesterday. You know, I mean, no, I, I, you know I didn't mean? watch that. Come on, that. I mean, come on. <laughs> we'll judge the interviews. Which yeah. one was better? Come on, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't watch that one. <laughs> what do I care about? Yeah, you got to do some on, research. Yeah. I watched it. Yeah. Longer, longer form is always, you know, it is, is always better. Yeah. It's more you conversational. Yeah. We'll get a chance to know you a little bit and just, you know, expand and bounce around and stuff. So, bro, a little uh, advice: if King Cohen comes calling, just take the offer. Dodger hat, Vin Scully. Come on. Now, a little more advice: the Mets are going to be seventy-five. Team this year. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Listen, man. I, I certainly echo with what Sal said. Depending upon the severity of whatever occurred, I'm 99% of the time behind second chances. So hopefully, you know, these next chapters treat you well. Uh, we laud you for your transparency. It can't be easy sitting in that chair, man, talking about this stuff. And I think uh, I think you did a really good job and appreciate you coming in, man. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. There you go. Trevor Bauer, get a quick timeout. <laughs> 